The Apollo 1 disaster, NASA's first fatal accident, resulted in the deaths of three astronauts, devastating the organization and the nation as a whole. What happened to their bodies after they were recovered? On January 27, 1967, astronauts Virgil Gus Grissom, Edward H. White, and Robert B. Chaffee were carrying out training procedures inside their spacecraft at the Cape Canaveral Launch Complex 34 ahead of their February 21st launch. Specifically, they were taking part in a plugs-out test, which involved going through an entire mock countdown sequence while their command module was attached to the Saturn 1B rocket that would eventually be carrying them up into space. The mission was to be the first crewed Apollo flight, and also the first low Earth orbital test of the Apollo Command and Service Module. The ultimate goal of the Apollo program, of course, was to put men on the moon for the very first time. At about 6.30 p.m., a fire broke out on their launch pad. Chaffee could be heard screaming over the radio. White opened the hatch to escape, but by then, the interior of the craft had been flooded with pure oxygen at a pressure slightly higher than Earth's atmosphere. As a result, the fire underneath the craft ate through the oxygen-rich air inside, and the three men asphyxiated before they could be rescued. Their burns, it's reported, were survivable. According to NASA, technical and management lapses had caused the fire. After the accident, the men's bodies were transported to a nearby medical facility. Photographers took pictures of the scene and the astronauts inside their vessel, but these photos have thankfully never been officially released to the public. Multiple memorial services honored the men and their sacrifice from January 29th through the 31st. The three bodies had been recovered from the craft intact and were buried at individual funerals. Grissom and Chaffee at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, and White at West Point Military Academy in New York. Meanwhile, a memorial in honor of all three of the men sits at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Latin inscription on the memorial reads, Ad Astra Per Aspera, meaning, a rough road leads to the stars. And indeed, even though the Apollo 1 crew never had the chance to leave orbit, their legacy did lead to the stars. Two years later, the 1969 Apollo 11 mission saw the first human set foot on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In an interview with the New York Times, Sonny Witt, 45th Space Wing Director of Operations for Division One at Patrick Air Force Base, said of the astronauts' families, they are the ones that lost the husbands and brothers and fathers. Mistakes were made, and they paid the price. Besides the crew's graves and memorial, Launch Complex 34 at Cape Canaveral still stands to this day as another memorial. The austere, weather-stained concrete box serves as a stark reminder of the tragedy that happened at that very spot some 57 years ago as of this video. For Florida Today, Grissom's younger brother Lowell describes mixed feelings about the site, a bit of anger, a bit of sadness, and a bit of pride. Meanwhile, former space shuttle engineer Mark Poff applauds the lost crew as superstars. The Astronauts Memorial Foundation, the group that heads up services at Launch Complex 34, hopes to expand its annual service to members of the general public. As has been said countless times since the tragedy occurred, the sacrifice of the Apollo 1 crew made future Apollo missions a success. In the words of NASA's Dr. David R. Williams, the changes made to the Apollo Command Module as a result of the tragedy resulted in a highly reliable craft which, with the exception of Apollo 13, helped make this complex and dangerous trip to the moon almost commonplace. The eventual success of the Apollo program is a tribute to three fine astronauts whose tragic loss was not in vain.